There's no doubt that Flux is an incredible model. However, depending on the LoRa and settings that you use, images are not always at the level that we need them to be. Particularly when dealing with people in portraits, Flux can still generate people with pasty looking skin, a lack of detail, and still has a general layer of AI-ness that makes the images very obviously AI. With that in mind, we're gonna cover a bunch of ways where we can bring an additional level of quality and detail to images generated not just with Flux, but with any AI model, all within Comfy UI. In today's tutorial, we're going to explore a concept called unsampling. Now, just to help refresh your memory, in case you don't remember or you don't know, the way AI image generation works is a random amount of noise is generated in an image and the AI model works backwards using its algorithms and the knowledge stored within the model to try and generate an image based on the prompts that we're giving it. Now, this is obviously oversimplified, but essentially the prompts help the model what images to look up in its database or neural network and then use the training data, which is actually images taken from a noise state to a denoise state to try and reverse engineer the noise that we've provided it to create something that approximates the prompt that we've given it. So what unsampling does is when we have an image that's already finished generating or an image that we've taken a photograph of, we are actually reintroducing noise into the image so that the model can then try and reverse the noise and in doing so, introduce more details. If that still didn't make sense to you, please do let me know in the comment section below and I will try and do a video where we dive a little bit deeper into this concept. However, I hope the illustrations I provided are good enough to help get you over the line. To do that in Comfy UI, if we jump into it now, we can see here a starting image that I've got. By the way, this image was generated with two different LoRa. So if finding out how to create two consistent characters in the same image with Flux is something you're interested in, again, please do leave a comment down below. And we can see particularly the character here on the right has that pasty AI skin look. So we wanna try and bring back some detail into that skin and give it a little bit more of a sense of realism. And as I said, one way that we can do that is with unsampling. So if we look at the workflow here from a global view, I know it looks like a lot, but if you get the workflow from my Patreon, there's only a couple of things that you need to manipulate to get the desired result. Over here on the left-hand side, we're just setting up a bunch of basic parameters, setting the model. In this case, I'm using Flux Dev Q6, the clip adapters, the VE, and so on. There's really nothing here that you need to be worried about. The next part over here is the part labeled as unsampling. Now. For this entire process, we're using a node collection called Flux to Pause. Now, this node actually allows us to do a lot more with unsampling, and we can actually take an image and completely change the style. However, we'll cover that more deeply in a separate video. The objective of today is to actually bring more detail back into our image. So all of these nodes come from Flux to Pause. So what's happening here in this unsampling group? In case this is the first time you're experiencing it, we're using these get and set nodes to essentially turn components into variables like the image, the ve, and access them elsewhere in the workflow without having strings all over the place. So we're grabbing the image and we are taking it from the pixel space to the latent space. And basically what that means is the latent space is the image in in the form of a concept that the AI model can understand, very simply put. Once we've done that, we then send it into a sampler, very similar to what we use with all kinds of flux image generations. And in that sampler, we're feeding in a bunch of nodes. The most important ones here is the basic guider, which takes in this flux D guidance set to zero, an empty positive prompt or an empty prompt. It's just, I say positive because it's green. For the unsampling process, it's incredibly important that this D guidance is set to zero. For the noise, we're using this disable noise node, meaning that we're not introducing noise in the traditional format. And then for the sampler, we're using this flux forward ODE sampler. Then over here for sigmas, we have a couple of things going on. First and foremost, we have here this inverse flux model prep, which takes in our flux model and the width and height of the image. And we set the max shift and base shift to these numbers. Now I'm going through a whole bunch of stuff that you may not understand. I will get into them briefly. The inverse flux model gets fed into the basic guider. And then for the basic scheduler, we feed in effectively what scheduler and steps we're using. Now there's a reason that we've pulled these out here. And in this case, we're using DDIM uniform, 24 steps and a denoise value of one. And I've got them pulled out here because these ideally should be the same in the sampling process, which is where we turn the noise that we've introduced back into details. Now, this is what's really important. The sampler is the component that actually does 
the denoising process, meaning turning the noise into an image. And the scheduler is the rate at which that happens. And that's why we have all kinds of schedulers like Euler, Keras, Exponential, DDIM Uniform, and so on. And this is basically just different graphs that tell the sampler how much denoising to do each step of the equation. And some of them are like sine curves, some of them start very slowly, aggressive, and then slow down at the end as the amount of denoising that happens at different stages ends up with different results. What we're doing here is we're adding in another node called flip sigmas. And effectively what that does is that reverses the instruction that the sampler receives. So instead of saying denoise based on the graph, whether it's normal, Keras, exponential, and so on, noise at the same rate. And that's why it's incredibly important that we use the same graph and number of steps because just as we are introducing noise in a certain way and at certain intensities, we want that to be reversed in exactly the same way. Otherwise, you could end up with an image that has still noise left over or is overbaked. Now, I'm still trying to fully understand all of the nodes and the entire process that's happening here, but the most important thing that you need to understand and manipulate to try and get more or less detail in your images are those components. Now, in the flux to pause paper, they do talk about how the flux forward ODE sampler is very important. The general recommendation from the GitHub is to not move the gamma, and I've not really seen any significant changes when experimenting with the gamma, so I would just leave that as is. And for the Influx model pred, we will cover this in another video, but this is one of the values in Flux Dev that you can manipulate to try and get better quality images, particularly this max shift and base shift. And again, leaving it at 1.15 and 0 0.50 will get you good quality images. There's really not too much of a need to touch it at this point. With all of that being done, the Sampler Custom Advanced will output a noised image. And you can see over here that the output comes up here and we can see that the image has noise. Now, to you and me, this might not look like much, but the original image is somewhere in this noise. And again, this is why it's so important that the parameters stay the same with noising and denoising because based on what I understand so far, this noise is on top of the original image. And as the denoising happens, that original image will come back ideally with a little bit more detail. We can see here from the sampler custom advance, the output is going up to that display image, which is showing us the noise, and then it's getting fed into here, which is another sampler custom advance. And we can see here, this is the group called sampling. And essentially, it's exactly the same as what we've done for unsampling, but in reverse. So you'll see most of the nodes are the same. We've got the flux deep set at a guidance of 3.5. I believe this is the equivalent of CFG. So again, this is one of the parameters you could manipulate to give the model a little bit more or less space in terms of the creativity that it takes. We've got the basic guider feeding in here. We've got the outverse flux model pred, whereas before we had the inverse flux model pred. So inverse for introducing noise, outverse for removing noise. We've got the flux reverse ODE sampler. Now this is an important one that we will get into in just a moment that feeds into sampler. We've got the scheduler, which takes in the same parameters as what the previous scheduler did, and that gets fed into the sampler disable noise. And then we've got here this multiply sigma stateless. Now you don't actually need this. You can feed straight into sampler custom advance. However, this comes from another node collection called detail daemon, which we'll cover in another video. When used in the unsampling process, it does introduce a little bit more detail as well. So I like to keep it in there. It'll be included in the Patreon version of the workflow. Now, the most important thing here that we want to manipulate is the reverse ODE sampler. And basically what we're saying is at what point do we force the original image into the noise that is being denoised? And what I mean by that is if you start too late or you end too early, what happens is in the denoising process, it will start to generate another image. And so you'll end up with potentially different characters or even a different scene with just slight hints of the original image. And I unfortunately did not save any of the images. I'll try and do it again so I can show you guys. But in case I don't, I'll describe what was happening. We would get a very similarly shaped coffee shop. So, you know, you kind of get the pillar over here, some of the lights in the background, the people here, and the general overall pose of the characters, but they'd be completely different. And that would be happening because we would be introduced Introducing the original image too late in the denoising process, but early on enough that certain elements did come through. And so you'll need to mess around with the numbers. I found that these work relatively well, but again, if you are able to play around with it, tweak it and get a significantly better result than what I've shown here today, please do come by the Discord and share it. We'd love to know more about your result. And that's why if you see here in the Flux Reverse ODE Sampler, one of the inputs is a latent image, which is the encoded VAE, meaning the original image, 
encoded into latent fed in here. And so what this does is this injects it into the sampler at the eighth step and it stops forcing it at the 18th step. And so if we've got here 24 steps of noising, it will start denoising, denoising, denoising this noise and then force the image or force the sampler to adhere strongly to the original image or reinforce the original image into the noise at the eighth step and stop at the 18th step, meaning that for the first eight step, the sampler can do whatever it wants and start to generate an image without taking too much influence from the original image, which could result in something that's a bit different. Then from 8 to 18, it will be forced to denoise to try and come back to this. And then from 18 to 24, the model will do whatever it wants, in which case that's when we start to see a little bit of introduction into more details. What you're trying to do is mess around with how much do I force the model to adhere to the original image? You know, if we made this step one and step 24, you'd get exactly the same image. And so by tweaking this and giving the model a little bit more room, the goal is to ideally end up with more detail. And coming back to that, one of the things that you could potentially manipulate is again, the number of steps here, maybe push this up to 30 and then having it go from a start step of eight to 18, you still get those 10 steps of introduction, but then you're giving the model more steps to mess around with on the tail end of the image. In fact, let's do that right now and we can look at the results. Okay, and we can see here, even though it's finishing up the other parts of the flow, the characters still look the same, they're still there. However, with that extra time and maybe a little bit too much time, the image has resulted in being slightly overbaked. We can see here the character on the right, her eyes are just this weird glowing green, almost alien-like, and we're still not getting a significantly enhanced result. So you gotta mess around with it and tweak and see what actually works for you. Let's try and give it one more tweak. Now that we've given it a lot more room on the tail end, let's increase the number of steps that we force the image. If we've got 30 steps, let's bring this up to a 25. Okay, and we can see here now by increasing the number of steps that we're forcing the image, in this case, starting at eight and ending at 25, we've ended up again with an image very close to our original one, but there are definitely some subtle differences. Now, to be quite frank, I'm I'm still not very happy with this image. It still has a bit of that AI look and feel, but I definitely think there is a slight improvement on the skin quality. It just feels that tiny little bit more natural. Now, there's a few additional things that we can do to, again, try and get the most out of the images, especially if there's one that you've created using Dev Schnell that you really like, and you just wanna get the most out of that image without having to generate something completely different, particularly when shifting over to Pro or the new Ultra and Raw models, you might not get that original image from the seed. So one of the things that I really like to do, which helps tremendously is adding on ultimate as the upscale, that entire upscaling process, not only increases the quality of your image, which means that you can zoom in and get it a little bit more crisper, but in the entire process, it does introduce a little bit more detail once again. And this is the messed up image from before, but it actually presents itself as a perfect example where we can see the before and after upscaling, there's a little bit more artifacting on the face, but that's actually as the upscaler trying to reintroduce details. And because the original image was not a great image, it was overbaked, those overbaked elements are coming through in the upscaling process. However, hopefully the revised image that we did when that comes through, we'll be able to see a significant improvement on it. Unfortunately, in this case, as the upscaler still did overbake the image, we still have a bit of artifacting, not as much as in the previous image, but it does look significantly crisper. And we can come into the SD upscaler and modify a couple of elements here to try and reduce that level of artifacting by reducing the CFG, trying out different samplers, reducing the denoise and model type. Just by messing around with that, you should get a higher quality, but maybe less artifacted image. You could also try a different upscaling model. I've used 4X Ultra Sharp. There's also Errors Gun, which can provide really good results. Finally, the last thing that you can do with this entire process to try and improve the details is we're using a quantized version of Flux. Flux Dev may produce better results, or you could even use a fine tune that is specific to creating characters or people with amazing skin, better and more realistic features. If you want a couple of model recommendations, again, check it out in the description below. I'll leave a few recommendations. You can try using different variants of models. Just remember, if you're using a quantized model, I have here the loader and dual clip loaders set to the GGUF models. You will need to install a special node collection for that. If you're not using a quantized node, just use the regular load diffusion model 
and the vanilla dual clip loader. And you should be good to go. And with that, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you really want to help me out and get access to the premium versions of this workflow, please come by the Patreon. Your support there makes these videos possible. I spent a lot of time trying to fine tune this and experiment with this so that the focus was on unsampling as a technique to reintroduce details in the image. I'm still messing around with it. However, my focus was to cover the concept of unsampling, which when used correctly can improve the result significantly. I will continue to experiment with this and I will post the results either in a YouTube post, on my Instagram or on Discord. So if you want to learn more or know what settings I'm messing around with, please do follow me there. Otherwise, if you have your own settings, please do let us know. I'd love to share it with the rest of the community. I hope you guys learned something here today. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll catch you guys on the next one.